ডাক্তার্লিনাকিডিসিন টুডেলজি and otolaryngology itself a very vast subject and uh, we radiologists are often very scared to uh, diagnose uh, uh, disease of uh, this entity so i will just uh, try to uh, touch some of the entities so next slide, next slide please <clears throat> so what's an mri the basic principles it is a magnetic resonance or radio frequency imaging so mri is based on nuclear uh, magnetic resonance which is nmr the two basic principles uh, of mri number one is atoms with an odd number of protons or neutrons have spin and a moving electric charge it could be positive or negative produces a magnetic field so body has many such atoms like hydrogen carbon fluoride and sodium and hydrogen nuclei is one of them which is not only positively charged but also has a magnetic spin mri utilizes this magnetic spin uh, property of protons of hydrogen to elicit images thus basically all mri are proton or hydrogen imaging so next slide please so mri utilizes the spinning property of protons of hydrogen to elicit the images so basically mri is a proton imaging So next slide please. Yes. So in our natural state hydrogen ions bodies are spinning in a haphazard fashion and cancel all the magnetism when an external magnetic field is applied protons in uh, the body align in one direction as the compass align the presence of earth's magnetic field the magnetic field strength is 0.3 to 7 tesla is 2500 times more than its earth magnetic field the average field strength is 1.5 tesla uh, half of the protons uh, align along the magnetic field and rest are aligned opposite to the ratio of anti parallel versus the parallel protons roughly 100000 to 100006 per tesla of flux this extra protons produce net magnetization vector which depends on flux and temperature next slide please Uh, now about radio frequency pulses uh, rf waves are used to manipulate the magnetization of uh, hydrogen nuclei uh, externally applied rf waves uh, portray the magnetization into different axes uh, it, it could be longitudinal or it could be transverse axis when a uh, radio frequency pulse is stopped hydrogen nuclei relax and a higher uh, energy gained by proton is transmitted and retransmitted by two mechanisms emitting uh, radio frequency signals which can be detected with the help of receiving coils the original magnetization begins to recover uh, when we acquire t1 weighted image and the excessive spins uh, begins to deface when we gather t2 weighted image and echo time a time interval in which signals are measured after radio frequency uh, excitation and the repetition time it is the time between two excitation is called repetition time so by the ver uh, be varying the tr and the te one can obtain t1 weighted image and t2 weighted image so in general a short tr is less than 1000 millisecond and a short te uh, less than 45 milliseconds can is uh, generally a t1 weighted image and long tr is more than 2000 milliseconds long te is more than 45 milliseconds scan is t2 weighted image and long tr is more than 2000 milliseconds and a short te is less than 45 milliseconds scan is proton density image so now we can see a t1 weighted image so the time it takes for the hydrogen uh, nucleus to recover 63% of its longitudinal magnetization is called a t1 weighted image so uh, we can see a t1 weighted image basically uh, the csf or the fluid contents are seems black or uh, we can say in radiological uh, language is hypo intense in case of t1 weighted image 
But in case of Chiruvari image, it's time for 63% of the protons to become defaced. So the fluid contents, it uh, becomes hyper intense. Next slide, please. Uh, here, I like to just be, be, before beginning the uh, showing the video, this is there is a very small video clip. Uh, I will uh, tell at least uh, one minute. Uh, please uh, allow me to uh, tell something uh, in, uh, in the middle of this uh, presentation. Thing is that our specialist and we, ENT specialist, uh, we do not want to go very interior of these things. We have uh, the Dr. Raphael has already given a light how this occurs and a very brief video taken from a very big video. Maybe some places uh, in Korea have been taken to show the uh, interior of a MRI machine as well as uh, the basics of T1 and T2W images. I will uh, request to concentrate on these things, everyone, uh, to uh, have some idea. Today, I will uh, mention another thing. This is the today about we heard the Tesla is the unit of this uh, presentation. The Tesla owner, Elon Musk, is the number one risk person of this world today uh, who uh, already uh, have, uh, keep behind all the people uh, in uh, last uh, week. Uh, thank you to uh, observe this very carefully, these steps of this uh, video. Uh, Dr. Rafael, to continue, please. So I guess this is an uh, hydrogen uh, atom. So the magnetic field aligns uh, the nuclei. It goes in longitudinal direction and sometimes in the transverse direction. And the RF pulse, uh, it tips the nuclei. And the nuclear press is giving off the RF signal. So here uh, we can see the T2 relaxation when uh, and the nuclear is realigned with the flux. So here we can see uh, there are different sort of coils for gathering the T1 and T2-weighted image. So the magnet, it, it gathers the B-flux field, which is uh, 10,000 times the Earth's magnetic field. And the gradient calls it It gathers the image. It's altered the uh, field in a different direction. These are the radio frequency uh, RF coils sends and receives the RF signals from tissue. There are uh, three components of magnet, the gradient coils and the RF coils. So we can see a T2-weighted image and uh, so there are two sort of uh, magnetization, one is longitudinal and one is transverse. So in case of T1-weighted image, 
The TR is lesser. Oh, thank you very much, uh, sir, for uh, including the video. Uh, maybe uh, a bit lag will happen. So uh, in, in the gray scale, we can see uh, the CD scan. The CSF is uh, black and the edema, uh, normally it surrounds the uh, tumor or neoplasm. It's somehow a dark gray and white matter is gray. Gray matter is uh, somehow a lighter gray. Blood somehow it's um, uh, near but white and bone is uh, purely white. Uh, in case of T1 weighted image, CSF and air is uh, high point tense. Edema is uh, high point tense too. Gray matter is uh, somehow uh, gray or ice cream tense. White matter is uh, uh, hyper intense cartilage and fat. Fat is the most hyper intense thing. And uh, in case of uh, T2, cartilage and air, they are hypointense and uh, fat. They are, uh, sometimes they are uh, uh, hypointense, but I think most of the time they're also uh, hyperintense too in case of uh, my personal experience. White matter is gray, grand gray matter is somehow uh, I saw intense and edema is hyperintense and CSF is always hyperintense. And MRI to flare where uh, we can see the suppressing of the water elements. CSF is hypo intense, cartilage is uh, nearby hyper intense. Fat is uh, iso intense and white matter, gray matter and edema, they are somehow iso intense to hyper intense. Next slide, please. So here's a, a example of CD scan, uh, what we have discussed in the gray scale and uh, we can see uh, various uh, bones and CSF. Uh, so the our learning point is in case of CD scan, the CSF is black or uh, hypo dense. We can see we can say dense. And in case of uh, T1 weighted image in upper right hand, we can see the gray matter is gray and the white matter is somehow white. We can see the nuclei here. And in case of uh, T2 weighted image, it's the opposite. The CSF is uh, hyper intense. And uh, we can see in the both uh, images, the fat is hyper intense. So if any lesion, they have fat containing uh, particles, they are both hyper intense in uh, T1 and T2 weighted image. And this is T2 flare image. The, all the water elements has been suppressed in this sort of image. Next slide, please. So flare and STIR, these are very useful for uh, diagnosing, uh, uh, for diagnosis. It's a 180 degree preparatory pulse is applied to flip the net magnetization and vector 180 degree annul the signal from a particular entity, such as water and tissue. So in contrast to real image reconstruction, the negative signals are recorded as the positive signals and some uh, same strength so that the null tissue uh, remains dark and all other tissues have higher signal intensities. So flare images are heavily T2-weighted with CSF signal suppression, that's what I've said, and uh, highlights the hyperintense lesions and improves their uh, conspicuity and detection, especially when located adjacent to the CSF containing spaces. In STIR, uh, sequences and inversion recovery pulse, which is used to null the signal from fat. So next slide, please. So uh, before we prescribe an MRI, we need to check uh, some sort of uh, criteria like pregnancy is a relative contraindication as we will never be able to tell with 100% of certainty that MRI is 100% safe during pregnancy. So there will be no mobiles, no credit card, please, because it is a magnetic field, no tattoo marks, uh, no uh, potential safety concerns due to a large static magnetic field such as internal cardiac pacemakers, steel cerebral aneurysm clips, uh, small steel uh, slivers embedded in eye, life support equipment with the magnetic steel, the cochlear implants and stents anywhere in the body. So next slide, please. So uh, CD scan and MRI. So, so the good point of the CD scan is faster, it's less expensive, it's less sensitive to patient movements, it's easier to uh, claustrophobic, uh, acute hemorrhage is very much good for CT scan and calcifications, bone details and foreign bodies are easily detected. 
In case of MRI, is no RNA radiation. This is the most uh, valuable point. Greater details, hence more sensitive and more specific. Any plane scanning and a contrast is less allergic and contrast can be used in case of renal disease and failure. So next slide, please. So indications of uh, MRI in ENT. Mainly in otology, we uh, gadolinium enhanced MRI for sea angle tumor. MRV and glomus jugulari. In case of uh, rhinology, we can uh, detect pituitary tumors, nasopharyngeal carcinoma involving base of the skull. Uh, we can detect uh, CSF rhinorrhea orbit. And in case of laryngology, uh, dynamic MRI and OSA, laryngeal carcinoma, oral malignancy, and many more. So next slide, please. So here we can see a case, a uh, very good case of uh, CP angle tumor. This is a case of this is a case of vestibular schwannoma. So intracanalicular vestibular schwannoma with a uh, systemic component. And uh, the first one, this is a contrast enhanced T1 weighted image. We can see a hyper uh, en enhanced uh, enhanced mass here where the mouse is placed. Enhanced mass is with uh, inverted comma like shape, and uh, the on the coronal. On the coronal reconstruction, we can see the same tumor uh, at the left side, left sip angle. And the axial CISS image is a tumor and adjacent fine anatomic structures as well as the funnels of the nerve. Next slide, please. Here we can see a very good example of uh, vestibular schwannoma. This is a contrast enhanced T1-weighted image the uh, mass is very uh, characteristic and typically it looks like an inverted comma or cone uh, um, based cone ice cream block uh, shapes. And uh, uh, it's acute angles, it's petrous bone, often involves the internal uh, auditory canal. It's very homogeneous in enhancement, no dural tail sign and no calcification. This is the same, uh, patient, only the different uh, uh, plane, this is coronal plane. Also, this is a uh, vestibular schwannoma. We are seeing at the right CP angle and the tumor is very characteristic, uh, very enhanced on uh, contrast and they have uh, unenhanced the central uh, necrotic spaces, which is unenhanced and uh, less, uh, what we can say, less, uh, Mm, hyper intense. Next slide, please. So this is another case. This is another case, uh, another entity uh, that is meningioma. So this is the second most common uh, CP angle tumor. And this is very well circumscribed. This is globular, uh, lobulated. It's a non-glial tumor. And uh, uh, this is very clearly demarcated from the brain. Usually it arises from the posterior surface of the petrus. And sometimes it doesn't, uh, normally usually it doesn't extend towards internal acoustic canal. So main the diagnostic elements, these are arise from the petrous bone, uh, obtuse angles, uh, obtuse angles. And this has a, another very important diagnostic criteria. There's a dural tail sign. We can see the dural tail at the edge of the tumor, which is very continuous with the meninges. And uh, we can say mama body, Sometimes it may herniate it into the middle cranial fossa. And if it is uh, very much uh, adjacent to the bones, uh, like we can see here, uh, we can see hyperstosis. And the very much, uh, it is very much homogeneous actually. The enhancement is very much homogeneous, like no uh, other, uh, what is called hypo uh, intense spaces in the tumor. So this is very characteristic. We can see another uh, very good and very uh, nice example of meningioma, very homogeneous, and uh, they have dural tail sign and very much uh, well defined. So, this is very common and very, uh, easy to diagnose. Next slide, please. Our next uh, case is an uh, epidermoid cyst. Uh, this accounts for 2 to 6% of the CP angle masses, uh, the congenital lesions that is present in adulthood. Rest of uh, ectodermal tissue containing uh, stratified squamous lining and keratin. 
uh, it may arise uh, within the temporal bone or the CP angle. So mainly this is an uh, extra axial lesions spread along the basal surface. And if it ruptures, it causes meningitis. So here we can see is this is a cystic lesion. We can say saying that this is an epidermoid cyst. And we know that in case of T1-weighted image, the cystic lesions, they uh, present like hypo intense or black. So in case of uh, first image at right hand side, we can see the cyst is black and on the uh, different uh, plane, this is sagittal plane, uh, the uh, left, left hand, uh, left, right hand side, upper part, this is another plane. And uh, in case of T2 weighted image, uh, this is hyper intense. And uh, when we uh, administered contrast, it is uh, it has taken inhomogeneous contrast enhancement with uh, some necrotic spaces uh, within the tumor. The next slide, please. So this is a case, another entity. We call it arachnoid cyst. This is a lobulated collection of CSF. Uh, uh, the duplication of arachnoidal membrane and erosion of the adjacent calvarium mm -hmm. is often present, uh, but in this case, we don't see any sort of uh, calvarium uh, erosion. So the diagnostic uh, elements are, it is a cystic mass, definitely. It's non-enhancing, uh, smooth, irregular in shape, homogeneous and identical to CSF in all uh, image. So we can see the CSS spaces uh, everywhere, I guess. And this is almost the signal intensity is almost the same to the CSF always. And there is no calcification. In case of flare, the signal suppression uh, occurs. So another case, this is a uh, very uh, characteristic of diagnostic. This is another uh, uh, neuroma, which is arise from the trigeminal nerve. And we can see this is uh, the contrast enhanced T1 weighted image, very large and very uh, um, uh, bright uh, neoplasm, which is uh, compressing the CP angle and also the right temporal lobe. And also, there's Last another, there's another case. Uh, all are trigeminal uh, neuroma. Now we will uh, touch uh, MRI pituitary. Uh, pituitary gland, we all, I guess, uh, my distinguished colleagues, uh, uh, all of them know more than me. Uh, this is a pituitary gland. We can see the pituitary stalk and optic chiasma. They are very much adjacent to the carotid artery. And the cavernous sinus, uh, they contain uh, four uh, nerves and uh, containing carotid artery. Next slide, please, sir. Here we can see uh, a sagittal T1 weighted image here, and we can see the anterior pituitary, the posterior pituitary, the pituitary stalk, the mammillary body, the pons, and uh, I think uh, everyone knows already. And uh, the pons it bears the cerebellum and the cerebral matters. This is another plane which we call it coronal plane, and a very nice example of uh, pituitary, pituitary stalk, and pituitary gland. And here we can see uh, the T1-weighted image as the CSF is uh, hypointense. This is sphenoid sinus, sir. Next slide, please, sir. This is the same thing uh, on T1-weighted image. And we can see the anterior pituitary here. Uh, the CSF is uh, hypointense, the corpus callosum. Then uh, we can see the pons and cerebellum. So I guess the anatomy is like uh, very much uh, known to you all. Okay. So next slide, please. So in the pituitary, we, the most common uh, tumor is the pituitary adenoma. So the, uh, it is uh, divided into two parts, like pituitary microadenoma, which uh, less than 10 millimeter in size, and pituitary macroadenoma, which is greater than 10 millimeter in size. The radiographic features, the pituitary macroadenomas are by definition uh, more than 10 millimeter and diameter masses arising from pituitary gland and usually extending superiorly into the supracellular system where it can compress the optic chiasma. And the bilateral indentation by the diaphragma cella as the tumor possess superiorly can give a snowman or figure of eight configuration. Because these tumors are typically slow growing, the pituitary fossa is almost invariably enlarged with the thinned 
remodeled bones. So next slide, please. The MRI is preferred imaging modality and it is able to delineate the mass exquisitely well, as well as the clearly visualize an optic asthma and the anterior cerebral vessels and cavernous sinus. And the overall signal characteristics can significantly vary depending the tumor components as such as hemorrhage, cystic transformation or necrosis. So in case of a T1 weighted image, it is typically ISO intense to gray matter. Uh, the larger lesions uh, are often heterogeneous and vary in signal uh, due to areas of cystic change, necrosis, or hemorrhage. And in case of a T1 weighted image with contrast enhancement, the solid components demonstrate a moderate to bright enhancement. And T2, typically ISO intense to gray matter, and larger lesions are often heterogeneous and uh, vary in signals due to areas of cystic change, necrosis, or hemorrhage. So this is a very nice uh, example of a pituitary macroadenoma. This is a sagittal t weighted image. As we can see, the CSF are hyper intense and we can see a very uh, large tumor just above this sphenoid sinus. So this is a pituitary macroadenoma. Next slide, please, sir. Here, the another case of uh, pituitary macroadenoma, we can see a contrast enhanced T1 weighted image, and all of the uh, CSF has been suppressed, and uh, the mass is uh, like very bright, and it is uh, having a snowman and for figure of eight configuration. Here we can see uh, the mass is compressing the bilateral uh, cisterns and the internal carotid artery. So next slide, please. Here we can see a pituitary macroadenoma. And we can see this is a T2-weighted image, but it has a white spot or white uh, area in the tumor. So in case of a T1-weighted image, if any tumor has hemorrhage, they are like a, a bit brighter, a bit brighter than the uh, normal isolated tissue. So this tumor, they have hemorrhage inside. So next slide, please. And in T2-weighted image, they, we can see they are very bright signal inside the mass. And uh, this is a, a pituitary macroadenoma with hemorrhage. This is the same uh, patient, sagittal image, T1 weighted image, which is uh, contrast enhanced. And we can see uh, the hemorrhage portion. It, this is, uh, uh, as they have a necrosis inside, the hemorrhage portion is uh, hypo intense and uh, the pituitary rest of the solid portion, it become brighter and the contrast. <laughs> Now we'll jump at the paranasal sinus and nose, and we all are, well, is know more than me that please someone is taking background noise. Please someone is making background noise. Basha Jagora Gotas and Amrasha Shuntasi, please. Uh, acute sinusitis, uh, mucous retention cyst, polyps, destructive sinusitis, fungal sinusitis, there are mucosilis, inverted papilloma, benign tumors and malignant tumors, and there are small or absent sinuses, an opaque maxillary entrum, and a mass in the maxillary entrum. So what is the role of CD and MRI? Uh, CD value uh, for determining the anatomic landmarks and the variants. This information is uh, of vital importance to the ENT surgeon. And CD is also an excellent uh, for determining the whether there is an intraorbital extension of sinonasal disease, which is very common in the ventral two third of the orbit. Uh, when pathology approaches the orbit apex, an MRI study is very necessary to assess the spread of the cavernous sinus and intracranial compartment. If additional imaging is necessary, orbital MRI is the next step. So here we can see uh, uh, we can see in a hyper is a CD scan firstly, and we can see a hyperdense lesion which is involving the right ethmoid sinus, uh, partially left ethmoid sinus, posterior aspect, and bilateral sphenoid sinus. And uh, we can sometimes uh, it was initially diagnosed as a uh, neoplasm, but there is we can see there is a hyperdense material in the posterior right ethmoid bilateral sphenoid recess. Uh, the hyperdensity is actually a good prognostic sign indicating a benign process. So this is an example, actually an example of a fungal sinusitis. This is not a malignancy, this is a fungal sinusitis. As we can see in CD scan, 
the hyperdensity is a sign of benign process. Next slide, please. So we, uh, I have already discussed about these things. So this is an MRI of an allergic fungal sinusitis. So first we are seeing that there's a T1 weighted image, moderately high T1 uh, signal shows and low T2 signal with expanded sinus can see in allergic fungal sinusitis. We can see the fungus ball here where the mouse is placed and the sinusitis, uh, the fluid collection in the bilateral ethmoid sinuses. So the sinusitis mucosal, or uh, it could be a sinonasal polyposis. The three di uh, differentials uh, it should be in the head of the physician. Next slide, please. So MRI is also very useful for determining invasion of the skull base. Involvement of the skull base is seen as a replacement of the high signal of the fatty marrow on t one weighted image by the high point signal of tumor. Uh, we should also look for the foraminal extension whether by the perineural uh, spread of the direct invasion of the tumor. And MRI is also the study of choice for detecting the intracranial extension of sinonasal disease. So here we can see uh, a very extensive uh, case of sinusitis. Uh, in case of t one weighted image, we can see uh, somehow a hyper uh, somehow hyper intense. It's not actually very hyper, iso to hyper intense uh, lesions in case of bilateral maxillary sinus. And in case of uh, T1 fat set gadolinium enhanced images, we can see the hyper intense images. So this is very typical. So in case of uh, sinusitis, what are the complications? It could be a subperiosteal sub abscess, uh, orbital extension can happen. Uh, intracranial, emma, intracranial brain abscess can happen, epidural abscess, subdural empyema, or sinus thrombosis. So in the first image, on the t 2 weighted image, we can see some uh, fluid-filled hyperintense lesions. And in case of uh, contrast-enhanced uh, t one weighted image, we can see there are the peripheral uh, enhancement of those lesions. Sometimes we can misdiagnose as a uh, glioblastoma, or in other lesions, but this is a case of uh, brain abscess actually. And how we can differentiate that? We can differentiate it by diffusion weighted image. We can see restricted diffusion here. It's hyper intense sort of image, restricted diffusion. So this is a fluid field lesion. And when a fluid field lesion we can see in the brain, we should search for sinusitis. So this is a case of cerebral abscess. So next slide, please. So uh, the another complication is uh, orbital cellulitis. We can see here some uh, soft tissue density lesions in T1 weighted image. And uh, same patients of the coronal image, we can see the T2 weighted image, this is uh, hyper intense. So you know, we can see hyper intense fluid field lesions uh, in the uh, inferior aspect of the both orbits. So this is a case of orbital cellulitis associated with abscess. So next slide, please. So this is a complicated acute sinusitis uh, that we can see uh, T2-weighted image. We can see fluid uh, inside uh, left maxillary antrum. And in case of right maxillary antrum, we can see the mucosal thickening. And uh, the contrast enhancement, we can see the fluid lesions. They didn't take any sort of contrast. But the solid portions or mucosal thickening, they might take the contrast in case of T1-weighted contrast enhanced images. So next slide, please. So the role of imaging in the neoplasm of the paranasal sinus. So we can assess the extent of the disease. We can assess the intracranial extension. We can assess the orbital extension. We can uh, uh, inspissate secretion uh, uh, versus neoplasm. So we can differentiate it with the new, uh, secretion of the uh, paranasal sinuses versus neoplasm. And we can uh, also differentiate the lymph nodes. Here, this is a case of a lymphoma of sphenoid sinus and skull base. <clears throat> we can see uh, in case of uh, right sphenoid sinus and T2-weighted image, there are fluid lesions. And in case uh, on T1-weighted image, there is a uh, hypointense, but uh, when it is, uh, in, uh, when it is uh, we administer the contrast, uh, the enhancement in, is seen in, uh, left-hand side image, which is, uh, we can see in the yellow arrow. 
So next slide, please. So on the image, uh, hypointense tissue is seen in the telecopalatin fossa and on the video and canal, which is described by the yellow arrow. And on the image in the right, which is more cranial, there is a hypointense tissue and telecopalatin maxillary fissure and telecopalatin fossa. And the contrast enhancement we can see uh, in the left-hand side image, which is uh, described in the blue arrow. Next slide, please, sir. So this is a case of inverted papilloma. So inverted papilloma is characterized by inversion of the neoplastic epithelium of underlying stroma. It represents a unilateral nasal polyp, which is arise from the uh, lateral nasal wall. And um, usually the re region of the middle meatus and the middle uh, turbinate, which extension of the maxillary and ethmoid sinus is very common. And it causes non-specific symptoms like nasal congestion or epistaxis and biopsy is necessary. So this is a case uh, which is unenhanced T1-weighted image. We can see an inverted papilloma, which is uh, hypo-intense. And at enhanced T1-weighted image with fat suppression, we can see a very hyper-intense or like a, we can say the contrast enhanced uh, images uh, in the nasal cavity. Next slide, please, sir. We can see another uh, very good case of inverted papilloma and T1-weighted image. Uh, this is a, a high pointers image, uh, which is extended in the right nasal cavity. And in case of T1 image contrast enhancement, a very bright tumor we can see in the right nasal cavity. So uh, the malignant tumors of the sinonasal tract. Normally the malignant tumors of sinonasal tract are comparatively uh, a bit rare. But the clinical presentation is non specific, uh, often mimics a benign disease sometimes. And as a result, uh, the delay in diagnosis is very common. 75% of all the paranasal sinus tumors are on stage T3 or T4, and the perineural spread and manifestation of advanced disease indicates the poor prognosis. Here we can see in a malignant sinusal tract, uh, malignant tumor of a sinusal tract, which extended actually left hand side to the orbit. And also it invades the uh, regional bones and uh, partially the left uh, sphenoidal sinus. Next slide, please. Another uh, case of malignant uh, tumor in sinusal tract. Uh, on the uh, left hand side, we can see that uh, there is a tumor in the invading uh, the base of the skull and it extended to the right orbit. And uh, uh, in case of right hand side, uh, we are seeing a perfusion weighted image. Actually, this is a perfusion weighted MRI. Uh, we can see a very bright and it's, it looks like a fire as uh, images. So yeah, that's all. Next slide, please, sir. The fibrous oscillations, these are mostly benign and fibrous dysplasia, osteoma and fibroma are very common. Malignant cell uh, tumor is not uh, that common except uh, sphenoid ring and meningioma. So fibrous dysplasia on the left images of a patient who thought to have a chondrosarcoma. On t weighted image, there is a hypo-intense lesion, the yellow arrow described, uh, with the cystic components uh, in the red arrow. And on pre- and post contrast images, there is a solid enhancement of the mass with a peripheral enhancement of a cystic portion. So initially, the, it was diagnosed as a chondrosarcoma. Next slide, please. But here, when we did a CT scan, we can see there are fibrous dysplasia, and this is a very common uh, phenomena. We can see a very uh, fluffy, uh, uh, bony lesion in the right nasal cavity. So uh, by doing a CT scan, we uh, diagnose this is a fibrous dysplasia. So now we are jumping towards the disease of larynx. So uh, there are uh, many neoplasms actually, my distinguished colleagues knows better than me, the benign and the malignant. Uh, in case of the malignant, there is squamosal carcinoma, neuroendocrine tumor, that is carcinoid and melanoma, then rhabdomasarcoma, lymphoma. There are some benign, that is papilloma or uh, minor or salivary gland tumors, the glandular cell tumors. Here we can see a supraglottic tumor, which is, uh, which is uh, somehow uh, high, isoto hyper intense in case of t weighted image, as we can see CSF uh, behind the vertebra is uh, hyper intense. And on sagittal image, 
we can see a very uh, hyper intense mass in the supraglottic area in tituberated image. So this is another case of uh, supraglottic mass. An actual T1 meridian is showing large supraglottic carcinoma extending to the retropharyngeal space and abutting the right carotid artery, which is uh, described in curved open arrow, and destruction of the right thyroid area and destruction of the right arytenoid cartilage, which is described by the short solid arrow. So next slide, please. This is a laryngeal carcinoma. Uh, laryngeal carcinoma actually uh, occurs in uh, a lot of places, and but here we cannot see any sort of uh, cartilage invasion, as we can see uh, the there are no marrow change in uh, the cartilages. But this is a case of laryngeal carcinoma with cartilage invasion, as we can see the hyperintense fat plan. It is distorted in the cartilage region. So uh, the cartilage at the right hand side is distorted or destructed or eroded, which is uh, described by the short arrowhead. Next slide, please. So this is a glottic carcinoma, which is actually involves uh, the provocal cord. So this is a right cord carcinoma and the laryngeal ventricle, which is involves the arytenoid cartilage and anterior commissure invasion. Next slide, please, sir. This is a uh, transglottic carcinoma, uh, which is an MRI, t one weighted image. This enhanced transaxial t one weighted image uh, reveals a large supraglottic soft tissue mass arrows that invades the left uh, paralaryngeal space and the left uh, thyroid cartilage lamina. And uh, paralaryngeal uh, muscles and uh, sagittal t one weighted image demonstrates the full extent of the tumor as it infiltrates the level of the true cords. Next slide, please, sir. So this is a transglottic carcinoma again. Uh, the enhanced transaxial t one weighted MRI images reveals a large supraglottic soft tissue mass that invades the left para paralaryngeal space and the left thyroid cartilage lamina. The paralaryngeal muscles, uh, sagittal t one weighted image, uh, demonstrates the full extent of the tumor as it infiltrates the level of the true cords. So next slide, please. This is subglottic carcinoma. We can see here very uh, thin, uh, small mass, which is in the subglottic area. So next slide, please. Here we can see the carcinoma of a true vocal cord with subglottic extension. And the demonstrates thickening of the anterior commissure by a mass involving both true vocal cords. So next slide, please. This is a case uh, of a pyriform sinus carcinoma, uh, <coughs> which is thyroid cartilage destruction and extra laryngeal extension. Uh, on T1 weighted images, a large uh, hyperintense tumor is seen in the region of the right uh, pyriform sinus, which is described in the arrowhead. Uh, it's high signal intensity, whereas the right thyroid lamina is destroyed and its medullary cavity is replaced with a low intensity tumor. So distinction between the tumor and the strap muscle is very poor. So we can see the distortion of the uh, hyperintense fat plan. The tumor abuts the carotid artery, but does not involve its wall, which is very important for the surgeon, whether the artery is uh, affected by the mass or not. Next slide, please. <coughs> this is another uh, pyriform sinus carcinoma with thyroid cartilage destruction and extra laryngeal extension. On t weighted image, the extralaryngeal extension of the hyperintense tumor and the sharp muscles are better dele uh, delineated. And the contrast between the tumor and the fat within the paralaryngeal spaces is decreased. And the carotid artery, jugular vein, and the sternocleidal mastoid muscle. <coughs> so next slide, please. <coughs> so now we jump uh, in the salivary gland area. So I guess we all know the major salivary glands, the parotid submandibular and sublingual. The minor salivary gland is diffusely scattered in oral cavity, is buccal, palatine, labial, and lingual, and secretes 10% of the total uh, volume of the saliva. Here we can see uh, the non-contrast t 2 weighted image, axial and coronal images in top row, and the t one weighted axial and coronal images showing the parotid gland, which is thick uh, white arrows. We can see the parotid glands. 
and submandibular glands, which is thin white arrows. So this is a case of uh, bronchial uh, cleft cysts. cyst. Uh, the lesion shows same signal intensity as the muscle on T1 weighted image in uh, top left hand. And uh, on T2 weighted image MRI after contrast enhancement, uh, only the margin of the lesion was enhanced. So in case of T2 weighted MRI uh, image, the, the lesion is hyper intense. And in case of contrast enhancement, only the margin, it takes contrast enhancement. So next slide, please. Uh, this is a case of a hemangioma. And uh, we can see in case of uh, T2 element, there is a uh, tumor, which is very uh, thick walled. And uh, so centrally, it is a hypointense in the case of fat suppressor B image, the fat suppressor image, STIR. This is a very uh, bright uh, tumor, which is hyper intense. And in case of uh, T2 weighted image, it is also uh, very hyper intense as it contains blood product. So this is uh, a case of submandibular pleomorphic uh, adenoma. Uh, this is a CD scan actually. The transverse contrast in a CD scan shows that pleomorphic adenoma arises in the right submandibular gland. The attenuation characteristics have uh, little indications as to whether the lesion is benign or malignant. Next slide, please, sir. So uh, the findings are the this is a left uh, pristyle with deep parotid uh, parapharyngeal soft tissue density mass which is heterogeneously enhanced and differential diagnosis would be our pleomorphic adenoma, mucoepidermoid carcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, and schwannoma. So next slide, please. The actual T1 weighted image and actual T2 weighted image and actual uh, T1 contrast enhanced image fat, fat suppressed. This is an MRI image of 63 year old uh, patient suffering from carcinoma X pleomorphic adenoma at the left parotid gland. And the tumor is uh, heterogeneous on t weighted image. And on B image, the shows large necrotic areas and uh, irregular contours. And after contrast enhanced image, it takes the inhomogeneous contrast enhancement. Next slide, please. This is also another case of pleomorphic adenoma. Uh, we can see. It's a very uh, large, bright tumors uh, in uh, coronal tetraverted image. And uh, A, there is a proton density uh, weighted image. It shows a capsule uh, around the lesion. And B is tetraverted image. It shows high signal intensity of the lesion. Next slide, please, sir. So this is a case of uh, Warden's tumor. So what in tumors uh, is actually presents as a well circumscribed, partly cystic and partly solid tumors, uh, often located in the tail of the parotid gland. Uh, enhancement, uh, it occurs after contrast medium administration uh, is often relatively very poor, not like the uh, pleomorphic adenoma. And in the differential diagnosis of the multiple lesions, metastasis, lymphoma, or inflammatory disease must be considered. Next slide, please. This is a proton density weighted uh, image. Uh, MRI image shows a lesion in the superficial aspect of the left parotid gland. Next slide, please, sir. Uh, this is a malignant neoplasm. So in case of malignant neoplasm, we should consider the mucoepidermoid carcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, and acinic cell carcinoma. These are the main uh, three entities. So the mucoepidermal carcinoma, this is the most common salivary gland malignancy. Uh, this is a slow growing painless mass. Uh, in case of high grade tumor, it is uh, rapidly enlarging. So the mucoepidermal carcinoma of the parotid gland, uh, here the transverse CD scan shows an ill-defined mass that has less attenuation than uh, enhancing parotid tissue in the right parotid gland. So next slide, please. So this is an uh, MRI image. 
So mucoelement carcinoma of hepatic gland is T2 weighted image and shows an intermediate signal intensity mass and slightly lower in density than that of uh, native parotid tissue. And the illimited nature of the mass was exemplified by fuzzy margins of the transverse uh, contrast enhanced fat saturated T1 weighted image. So next slide, please. The actual T1 weighted MR image A of a 26 a uh, year old woman with a focal lesion in her left parotid gland. We can see uh, by the asterisk. Uh, note that there is a homogeneous hypointense solid lesion with a slightly irregular margin and an actual uh, T-weighted image um, at the same lesions shows strong homogeneous enhancement with uh, strongly irregular margins, uh, suspicions for malignancy as it is has been taken, they contrast. So this tumor turned out to be a mucoepidermoid carcinoma on histology. So next slide, please. So here the contrast in a CD scan shows an enlarged left submandibular gland, uh, it's described by thick arrow, associated with the destruction of the adjacent mandible, the white arrow. This is a case of adenoid cystic carcinoma. So this is the second most malignancy, uh, second most common malignancy and uh, this is an asymptomatic enlarging mass, which is uh, facial weakness is very common. So next slide, please. Uh, and coronal T1 weighted MR images uh, of the sublingual gland tumor. This is a very uh, well-defined mass, which is uh, hyper intense actually in case of T1 weighted image, which is a very characteristic finding. The margin of the tumor is well-defined. The tumor is composed of cystic and solid components. And in case of coronal fat saturated t weighted image, the tumor is all sarcoscopic with a high point as fibrous tissue and capsule. The signal intensity of the tumor is heterogeneous. So an actual t weighted image, a 61 years old woman with an adenoid cystic carcinoma in deep, uh, and, deep and uh, superficial lobe of the right pelvic gland, the tumor presents a large heterogeneous mass. And the T1 weighted uh, contrast medium enhanced fat suppressed images, which is B, uh, shows strong enhancement with hypo intense area in the center, slightly irregular margin with the posterior part of the lesion. So, this is a case of uh, pre operative uh, axial CD scan images showing a well circumscribed mass in the left parotid gland, which is actually turned out to be acinic cell carcinoma. And an actual T1 weighted image uh, on A and T2 weighted image on B and MR uh, images of 52 years old man with the acinic cell carcinoma. So we can see and uh, tumor, which is hypo intense on T1 weighted image, hyper intense on T2 weighted image and inhomogeneously enhanced on contrast enhanced images. It's turned out to be a acinic cell carcinoma. So now we are seeing a salivary duct carcinoma. This is a case of salivary duct carcinoma, which is actually due to an image and 73 years old pa male patient with histologically proven salivary duct carcinoma and the deep lobe of parotid gland, displacing the superficial lobe of parotid gland laterally. The lesion is also well delineated and hyper intense on T1 weighted image. It's hyper intense actually on T1 weighted image and suggesting the previous bleeding actually. So only the T1 weighted image contrast in as image fat saturated reveals the slightly irregular margin of the tumor, which could not be appreciated on native images suggestive of malignancy. This is a case of squamous cell carcinoma. So uh, one must rule out the high-grade mucoepidermal carcinoma, metastasis or uh, other uh, malignant tumor because this is only one to 6% uh, of the salivary and neoplasm. This is typical imaging of necrotic areas of a solid tumor. This is a CD scan actually. And the tumor best recognized in the fat suppressed T1 weighted MR image after administration of contrast medium or in enhanced CD scan images. We are in the uh, verge of uh, ending our presentation. So this is a case of miscellaneous case of thyroid glossal cyst, which is uh, hyper intense on uh, T2 weighted image, we can see it's very typical location. So next slide, please. This is a fat suppressed image, 
uh, we can see the cystic lesion. The cyst is not suppressed, very bright uh, lesion, uh, coronal uh, plane. And uh, I guess our uh, last case is a juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. So the MRI is an uh, excellent tumor. MRI is excellent, evolving the tumor extension into the orbit and intracranial extension. So this is a case of uh, juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. We can see a very large irregular uh, tumor. This is actually a T1 weighted image, which is contrast enhanced, and we can see the extension in. Uh, both of the orbits and also in the base of the skull, also in the uh, vessels. And uh, in case of contrast enhanced uh, images, uh, we can see the destruction of all the uh, surrounding bony structures is extended to the uh, bilateral orbits and it compresses the optic nerves and also the vessels. Thank you very much. I know this is a very uh, large uh, presentation, a long presentation, but this is actually a very huge uh, subject. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks, Rafael Marcelin, uh, for your excellent elaborative presentation. Uh, for uh, uh, targeting our ENT people, uh, what I uh, think, uh, we only uh, should uh, we will take care of the extent of the tumor and uh, surrounding tissue destruction for planning of the surgery uh, in this all sorts of tumors. But now uh, 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 Dr. Rafael has uh, nicely presented uh, it. I will, uh, I will request uh, to comment our panelists about uh, our aspects considering these things. <clears throat> I had an idea from the beginning that um, our ENT surgeons uh, are very reluctant to look at the uh, films of the MRI uh, uh, and uh, to see the, uh, uh, T1 and T2 uh, images, which are uh, which things and to see. So if this effort and this lecture uh, gives us some uh, idea and some braveness to look at this and to have details and even to discuss among our friends uh, that how to uh, proceed. Now I will request Professor Balayat Hussain Siddiqui sir. He is the uh, chairman and uh, Bangabandhu Shak Mujib Medical University and he is the head neck surgeon and uh, he is a very renowned surgeon in uh, top nose position of Bangladesh. Uh, now he is also the president of uh, head neck society. society. Uh, Professor Balayat Hussain Siddiqui sir, please for your comment. Uh, 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 I will request the panelists to take uh, three to five minutes, please. Okay, thank you, Professor Krishin. Uh, this, uh, first of all, I will thank Professor Kushid for arranging such an uh, beautiful and uh, useful session for the ENT people. And also I extend my thanks to Dr. Rafael Mursalin for giving a very elaborative as well as informative and case-to-case -case description uh, of the ENT region or otolaryngology region. Uh, actually, these cases we are facing regularly in our practice and Sometimes we are uh, bypassing or overlooking the imaging uh, image films. Yes, but the one thing should we should remember that this era, 21st century, without imaging, you cannot be a good uh, without knowing the image, knowing to uh, how to read the image films, you cannot be a good clinician. And. Uh, it's a very integral part of our uh, clinical uh, uh, that is uh, practice, and to reach a clear-cut diagnosis, or if you want to plan the treatment properly, you must know about the uh, imaging. And sometimes you have to we have to interact with the radiologist on some uh, gray areas 
that is uh, not very clear to both of our specialty. Sometimes we have to discuss because there are a lot of cases which are not very typical. Sometimes uh, if it's the atypical cases. So one thing I uh, I want to so that this uh, this is very informative and one uh, we should know not only the clinical aspect uh, to explain something we should know the basics also basics not that elaborative like the radiophysicist or like the radiologist but to some extent we should we should know we cannot ignore it so uh, i think the people will be uh, feel uh, today uh, those are attending this session they will feel interest in this uh, regard and uh, uh, and they will also disseminate the information to the other colleagues. And uh, if we arrange this sort of session regularly, or at least periodically, something uh, uh, this will be very helpful to improve our standard of reading images, like uh, MRI, CT scan, and also the other modern uh, imaging systems. That is PET scan or like that, SPECT, PET scan, etc. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Rafael and Dr. Thank you, Professor Kushidala Majumdar. Thank, thank you, sir. you. Thank you very thank much, you. sir. Thank you very much, Professor Red, sir. Uh, you have correctly mentioned that the basics of MRI, the uh, the spinning, uh, we are in a world that the uh, smallest molecules is spinning. The earth is spinning on itself, the sun is spinning on itself, the whole of the uh, universe have this spinning rule. This is from the bigger to the smaller one. And the beauty of this is we are using the uh, gravity and anti-gravity forces and we are uh, utilizing this. Uh, this physics is also interesting of this and we are uh, taking advantages by the uh, uh, scientists uh, activities that we are using this in medical uh, part. Uh, in fact, now I will request Professor Nasim Akhtar, though we have very little aspects of the year and she is an ear uh, otologist and a renowned otologist and uh, she is the first uh, 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 woman ENT surgeon with high skillness in otology and uh, she is professor of uh, otology and professor of ENT and otology in Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib uh, University doing a lot of ear works and uh, also all uh, ENT aspects. In addition, she is specialized on that. Madam, please pass your comment. Uh, thank you, Kachid Bhai. Uh, uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, I actually appreciate Dr. Rafael Morsalin for uh, he told that first when he started the his presentation, he told that it is a ENT is a vast area. And I appreciate him to see his braveness. He can cover all the part, little or more, and autology a little bit. <laughs> but in, <laughs> uh, but the basic of MRI is nice. We have to know the basic because the magnetic field is 30 to 60,000 more than that of our earth magnetic field. It's amazing. And uh, how the hydrogen molecule is spinning and longitudinal and transverse way, uh, I, I, I am actually amazed. And for the last few days, I only read the basics. <laughs> and uh, all the things are uh, fine. Uh, I only told this, it is so vast that now I am a feel dizzy to know gray scale. Oh, which one is a uh, hyper intense, which one is hypo intense. But when I know the T1 and T2, then it, it is possible to remember and what happens in T1 and T2, that goes to the basic. And I give special thanks to Rafael for this so nice presentation on the basic. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you are a junior one, I, I just request to you that you will go to one part of the radiology, like advanced countries or other countries, and you will emphasize on that one. Uh, because here you could not cover the autology and uh, the cochlear implant is one of the most 
important issue in the whole world now it is the recent surgery going on in the whole world and we are we feel so difficulties uh, before going to do cochlear implant mri is must to see the cochlea any anomaly uh, any ossification uh, and the vestibular cochlear nerves is, is there is uh, absence of the nerve or any anomaly in the nerve these things uh, so i request to if you have been interested uh, you will give some knowledge about that in another day and sure. uh, i thanks to the khushid bhai uh, for ending so nice uh, presentation by the rafaith on mri thank you thank you thank you very much madam thank you very thank, much thank you madam uh, you have you have encouraged our boys especially the juniors who have started reading the mri what is t1 and t2 in fact if we look to understand and we to memorize the basics of t1 and t2 and the gray scale we can have the footprints of this and we can step forward uh, with giving this uh, ideas now i am going to request professor sheik hasanur rahman babar uh, please give your comment uh, and give ideas for our uh, youngsters thank you sir uh, sir shuna jacche amake ha ha clear uh, thank you sir uh, i must congratulate uh, dr rafael mursalin uh, very brilliant uh, uh, radiology and imaging specialist uh, actually i i have first uh, seen today uh, today i have, uh, first met her meet him and uh, so brilliantly and uh, so uh, precisely he had uh, Uh, tried to present the whole otolaryngology and head neck surgery but uh, he presented like a head neck radiologist yes uh, and otol uh, head neck radiologist and uh, actually in our country all are general radiologist they are uh, uh, on the whole radiology uh, we need actually specialist in otology is image image is published in otology in head neck in rhinology in skull base in different aspects and we if we want to give uh, the better service to the people and uh, actually to me i i i uh, to me it was supposed that he is a head neck radiologist and he, in a nice way he presented and uh, actually uh, one thing uh, uh, some contraindications like implants uh, nowadays i think there are some uh, mri compatible implants in the world like yes. pacemaker and other things implants clips everything so uh, whenever uh, we um, advise the patient for mri if we are clinician or uh, the radiologist we must uh, we must ask those people who are implanted like pacemaker or other things we want to see that uh, we we should see the documents whether these are mri compatible or not and uh, that may uh, uh, result in some accidents so it, it is one thing and another thing uh, although time time was very little i think uh, for this reason uh, rafael could not Uh, uh, present yeah. everything in details uh, like that for mri also. mri is actually sometimes ct is better than mri and sometimes mri is better than ct yes. and mri is actually for head neck region and skull base uh, and it is intradural or extradural uh, whether it involve involve the brain or not and mri is for uh, for uh, head neck uh, cancers for neural involvement and uh, particularly neural involvement dural involvement and these are the uh, more important things and csf leakage dural um, uh, csf fistula for these things mri is sometimes uh, much helpful than uh, ct scan uh, and uh, above all actually uh, mursalin is very brilliant and uh, i have uh, i i feel very proud to uh, meet with him today thank you thank for you. professor thank you very much, sir for arranging such a uh, session for us thank you
for thank everybody you. for all auto thank you very much thank you. thank you very much professor shekh hasanur rahman babar he is uh, working mostly on rhinology and uh, uh, laryngeal trauma and laryngeal stenosis and this uh, laryngology and rhinology and he is uh, doing very excellent works and his commented comments to uh, dr rafael mursalin is very very appreciating thank, thank you, you very much sir thank you very much sir now i like to uh, request professor shekh nurul fatta rumi professor rumi is here Professor Rumi, Professor Rumi, our finalist, are you here? Yes, yes, yes. Sleeping maybe. Okay, next time, I mean, our yeah, go. Professor Kanulal Shah, I I can see he is awake and move <laughs> with movement. Uh, please, uh, yeah, Professor Kanulal Shah is an otologist and he is working in Bangabandhu Shah Mazi Medical University with uh, reputation. He has. a uh, lot of uh, uh, cochlear implants and other surgeries uh, with professor nasima madam and others uh, professor kanula shah please you comment though we cannot show uh, mass uh, on the autology <laughs> thank you sir <clears throat> so uh, first of all i would like to uh, convey my very uh, uh, thanks to the presenter because uh, yeah. uh, we uh, get less uh, uh, such lectures especially focused on uh, otolaryngology imaging and i see whenever we get any lecture on imaging the participants are always in huge in number because it is a very important topic everybody feels so it's my honor and privilege to uh, uh, share my experience before the learned faculties and the specialists from different parts of the country um madam and you sir uh, said perfectly that uh, mr in uh, mr mohsen has covered less on otology and some part he has covered mainly on the ct angle and specialist so if you give me a little uh, time sir i want to share my little experience of imaging because i am very much fond of imaging since 2005 and mainly uh, i am uh, fond of very much on the ct scan And, and uh, we see the CT scan is superior in respect. Welcome, Professor uh, Kanula Shah. You please uh, uh, share, and it is sharing is open, and you please try to complete it in next five minutes, please. Okay. So uh, we all know uh, the, the CT scan actually is uh, being an autologist. We uh, the CT is superior uh, in respect of space resolution and contrast between the soft tissue uh, and air uh, than the MRI, but. Uh, the MRI is excels in the soft tissue delineation, and especially for differentiation of the um, vascular lesion and staging of the uh, uh, new plasma and the CT angle lesions. So I just just uh, want to share my uh, few cases. Recently, in the lockdown, every day I uh, give requisition many cases of the CT scan MRI. The last uh, week, I got a case of 54 years old lady presenting with the Use uh, cystic tablation occluding the whole canal, and she had a history of years as the twenty years ago. There was no uh, papers, nothing is there. But I had <coughs> only option to see what is beneath, what is be behind this lesion, how the uh, the lesion comes. So I advised for actually CT scan, and I got the whole tegmen was dehiscent. So in that condition. Uh, clinically uh, it was a cholestoma unusual presentation and there is a whole tegmen was dehiscent so now i need the mri indispensable to see whether it is a bent herniation or the cystitis or the cholestoma and at the same time to see whether it has the it has the adherent to the dura or it has got some separate so this is one case i don't go further about this another case a 4 years old child of a doctor child the presented with the unilateral sensory hearing loss And uh, uh, the child, uh, the CT and MRI reported normal. Unfortunately, reported reported normal. When I reviewed the uh, MRI, I got the cochlear nerve was absent. Absent. Only cochlear nerve was absent. Mm. So unfortunately, it was missed. And then I uh, requested uh, the uh, radiologist to re-report the uh, review the report. The next case recently, 35 years old lady presented with the sudden sensory hearing loss four months back. and we are suspecting this may be a case of something the ct angle lesion but mri reported it is a facial of schwannoma in the uh, isc it is one of the unusual presentation only mri can differentiate this 
another case of 45 years old uh, man presenting with the sensory hearing loss of six months ago. I just politely say it is a case of sudden sensory hearing loss, but even then, uh, we can uh, uh, you can do a MRI to find out any underlying disease. And it was diagnostic case of bilateral vestibular one-sided sensory hearing loss. So these are many more cases I can discuss before you. One of the important cases are now admitted in our department uh, uh, is a lateral sinus thrombosis, a 14 years old girl presented with the cholestatoma with uh, lateral sinus thrombosis with the abscess in the suboccipital region through the emissary vein. So we did the MRI and we get the very nice uh, images. So these are the lot of cases I do every time. So in case of cholestatoma, why do we do the MRI? Now the ecoplanar, non-ecoplanar MRI is uh, MRI is indispensable in case of uh, congenital cholesterol. In case of canal done, canal wall of mastoectomy to see the recurrence to avoid the second. In case of blind set closure, we don't see anything else. So if we want to have something left in the uh, recurrence or residual, we go for the uh, MRI in a case of cholesterol. Madam has nicely mentioned in case of being an cochlear implant surgeon, the MRI is indispensable because if to see the cochlear nerve, whether it's a hypoplastic or a plastic or early meningitis or fibrosis, so MRI is a must. And in case of uh, the paragangloma, I do paragangloma, extremely typical master paragangloma uh, very frequently, but in advanced cases, whether it has involved the carotid or whether it has invaded the jugular bath, uh, CT, we cannot uh, get the delineation about the soft tissue involvement. So the MRI is a must in that case before. If it is uh, involved the carotid or jugular valve, it has to be handled by the lateral skull based surgeon. That course is quite different. So lastly, I want to say that commonly we get many more cases of the older patient with the malignant orthopedic externa and the malignancy. So it can help us to appreciate the malignancy and the orthopedic externa. Lastly, my few comments regarding the uh, radiology is that the inappropriate report, inappropriate report misleads the surgeon, truly speaking, and poor images are usually useless and, and sometimes wasted of money. So I believe the radiologist and the clinician, especially in, from my perspective of view, autologist, should be always in compliance to get the real benefit of the high-tech uh, images. Mm -hmm. and it is indispensable. Our respected Balayatrishan Siddhika says it is indispensable for all advanced uh, clinicians, especially in case of the autolaryngology hernia surgery. Thank mm -hmm. you, sir, for giving me a little opportunity to show my experience, and I always appreciate it. It is very, very useful, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Kanul Al Shah, for your very, very uh, your experiences you have uh, shared with the audiences. Now I will request uh, uh, Colonel uh, Iftekarul Islam, Iftekarul Alam, to uh, give his opinion. He is a uh, cochlear implant surgeon in uh, presently working in our uh, CMS uh, Dhaka. He is uh, an otologist and as well as a. Uh, please, Dr. Iftekarul Alam. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for inviting me as well. And first of all, I like to uh, give the congratulations to Dr. Rafael. Uh, you have presented this case very well. Uh, it's amazing, uh, so much informative. Uh, many of the things already, it has been discussed by uh, Dr. Kanulal. Uh, he mentioned the right thing and uh, almost what are the things we uh, usually want from the radiologist. Uh, I have two or three questions to ask you regarding what is the proper way of writing, uh, I mean, a requisition so that you radiologist can understand what we are uh, really want from you. Um, first of all, I regarding a CT scan, I want to mention one thing. See, as a autologist, my point of view is to see the cochlea and the other parts, the inner ear, the cochlear duct and vestibular duct, something like that. So the way I used to write it, like HR CT scan of the mustard or the temporal, uh, temporal mustard region with 3D MIP view of cochlea, is it all right? this is all right sir but uh, normally normally we don't actually uh, being very frank so we don't know much uh, ent like you know so if you yeah. suspect some uh, if you give some attention like 
whether to find these sort of things, sir. So it will be very helpful for us, sir. See, all these childs are uh, congenitally deaf, so they might have other issues like exactly. congenitally deaf child. They might be a child of the Mondini deformity. They might have uh, cochlear uh, dysplasia. They might have uh, dysplastic cochlear nerve. So, what do you want from us uh, in the deterioration? So we are not suspecting anything. We are just sending a normal child to you. The child is uh, congenitally deaf. But what will be the proper way of writing a, a requisition for this sort of child? Only congenital deaf. No other abnormalities you are suspecting right now. Sir, this is actually very tough, sir. Because uh, when we get the images, sir, we, this already has been like uh, published films. So uh, when the patient goes to a technologist, so this is very tough, actually. They don't come up to us. So normally they go to the, uh, the counters and they go to the technologies. And when normally we get the images, the patient is already gone. So okay. there's a, so there's okay. a problem. Thank, uh, thank you. Uh, another is that for the, <laughs> for the MRI, MRI points of view, uh, we used to write that uh, MRI of the inner ear, special attention, uh, attention to the internal acoustic canal and the cochlear nerve. Is this sufficient? So this is sufficient, sir. Okay. For the recurrent cholesteatoma, should I write uh, MRI of the ear with DWI protocol? Yes, it's useful, sir. Uh, is it mandatory to write the DWI protocol without writing this? Not mandatory, sir. But if you, if you, if you, sir, want, it is, it is useful, sir. Some, sometimes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mursalin, and also for your nice presentation. And we are, we are looking towards you that so that we, uh, you will take another class only on the autologic points of view. And My pleasure, sir. I think it will be uh, beneficial okay. for us. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you, thank you. all the panelists, sir. And I thank you, sir. Thank you, thank sir. you very much, thank Colonel, uh, Colonel Iftekarul Alam. Uh, thank you. I have seen uh, some uh, gentlemen, our Colonel Rabbani uh, Sharkar, uh, who has been joined from Central Africa. Dr. Rabbani, are you still with us? He had, a, he had a query at our uh, chat box. Dr. Rabbani, uh, are you still with us? Colonel Rabbani? No, probably uh, left. Now uh, I will request Professor Kamrun Hassan Tarabda sir to give some comment on the uh, session as well as uh, some uh, indicative for the students. Thank you, Professor Mojumba. All the people in this panel are your students, probably, Professor, if I exclude Professor uh, Abdullah sir and Professor uh, Ranjit, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dada Ranjit, Arkenar Dada, as well as we are, we are all uh, uh, your accompanying uh, students, as well as the colleagues of uh, same uh, time we have done our fellowship. So, Thank sir, you, Mojumdar. As I have got some voice disorder, I'm requesting you not to talk anything. Very, but still, short, I asked you sentence. about Dr. Rafael Mursalim. When I have got corona infection, I've gone to him and for CT scan. He was expressing so nice. I was telling, I'm not only like to say about the chest, what's about the abdomen. He was telling, spleen is like this, kidney is like this, kidney is even bigger. I've seen he's a fantastic personality. His father was a also very fantastic radiologist of this total Bangladesh. You know him. In yeah, okay. Corona. Yes, yes. Actually, one thing why you want to learn from the panelists here because we are facing now a lot of patients with obstructive sleep apnea. And our friends are writing patients with an adult deviation, CT, PNS, or MRI, PNS. Sometimes we're telling, we have got the old minister. And when he was gone for the MRI, he was with the sleep apnea. It is very difficult for this sort of patient because falling asleep in a gantry, they are very scared and afraid of that. So in that case, there are some special MRIs dynamic MRI or sleep MRI. In this situation, one should not write that this patient MRI of this thing, this thing. Another thing, oh, Dr. Sheikh Hassan Rahman already told, especially in the CSF rhinoria, CSF otoria, this only diagnostic criteria is the reservoir sign, and another thing is the MRI or CTMS to seeing the focus area. 
Professor Abu Kaisar from uh, Jashor. Professor Abu Kaisar, are you here, please? Professor DZM Akaidu Joman, you have just come away uh, from your sickness. Will you please give a comment on the uh, our today's program? Are you still with us? I can see you. <laughs> Professor Akaidu Joman, please. Yes. 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 I was, I was unmuted. Uh, yeah. I, 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 Professor Akaidu Joman, you have two sets connected. Yes. Act off. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, thank you. I, I, first of all, I, I give thanks to Dr. Rafael Morshed Mursalin for his excellent presentation uh, on the MRI and uh, imaging on uh, head and neck uh, uh, imaging. Uh, his uh, uh, presentation was very good. I can remember the sound of MRI a few days back. MRI of my uh, abdomen, so I can uh, remember the sound of CT and MRI. Uh, uh, in the present era, the uh, uh, detailed knowledge of uh, anatomical knowledge is very important. And without CT and MRI, the fine details of any structure is impossible. At the same time, the, any, any kind of malignancy with its extension, particularly with connection to the vessels, nerves, intracranial structures is very uh, crucial for taking decision of any operation and uh, any uh, extension of the operation. So this kind of uh, webinar, seminar is very important for our uh, knowledge, extension of knowledge. So thank you, Dr. Mursalin, and all the panelist audience thank for arranging this kind of. Thank you, Professor thank you, Akhaid Akhaid Jaman. Thank you, Professor Akhaid Jaman. Uh, Professor Joholok Shachu, are you still with us? Professor Shachu. <laughs> Professor Mohammed Yusuf. Please pass you. your comment in one minute, please. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me the chance. So I like to say a few words to the junior colleagues. Number one is uh, CT, MRI, or both is required for, especially for carcinoma of head neck region, to see the extension, to see the environment, and to get to get the staging and management, planning of management. Number one. Number two is CT scan is better for laryngeal carcinoma, especially in advanced cases, because MRI needs long time and breath holding is required during taking SNF. So CT scan is, uh, is easier for the patient because of taking uh, short time for taking the SNFs. And uh, number one, num number two, number three is MRI is a must in case of carcinoma tongue and floor of mouth to have decision about the extension of the dissection to get a free margin. Uh, and for buccal carcinoma, pop cheek CT scan is better than normally uh, to, to, see, to see the involvement of the mandible. And I like to say a few words about our radiologist. Uh, actually, uh, not all the time we are getting uh, good report or the uh, actually the, the hot report once not get we are not getting getting a good report from all the centers in case of ct and mri because actually uh, like ourselves 
they are uh, they are also uh, in general ideologists all of them almost all of them nowadays the days has come to choose the subject yeah ent or uh, abdominal or gynecological the, in this way subject super spirit should be chosen so that the report should be better than uh, nowadays now about reporting and reporting is very problem for us even uh, i've got a, i can remind the patient uh, i got got a child pediatric um, children a pediatric patient with parotid tumor about 10 to 11 years of old from cox bazar so he had, he had fnsc the report was pure morgadinoma curiously i uh, wrote uh, mri for parotid as the, the, the was a child the report was coming like that the involvement of masseter muscle involvement of the uh, mandible everything and he suggested ct scan as well i did ct scan ct scan told nothing is there then i i did the surgery i got nothing no, nothing in there is involvement no muscle no involvement no nerve and no bone even so overfitting is also a problem so this is our time to choose the subject in which super specialty or in which which area I will, I will work this is also for radiologist mm -hmm. like us because we are started uh, super specialty is practice nowadays thank you thank you professor so we got your point and we will be looking for that uh, thank you very much uh, then uh, i like to request professor samaresh kundo professor samaresh kundo are you here to comment uh, professor samaresh kundo Professor Shamoresh Kundu, Professor Shami Manwarul Haq, Professor Shami Manwarul Haq was with us. Professor Shami Manwarul Haq. So probably uh, he has uh, left. Um, Anyway, I could see Professor Shomarish Kundu moving, but uh, Colonel Ali Azad. Colonel Ali Azad, please Hello, comment in two minutes. Thank you very much, sir. Hello, Koshad Bhai, I mean Shamim. After Shamim, uh, Dr. Colonel Azad will say. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for excellent program. But at all possible, you know, to eta. Eta pura ta shole, amra separate nai. Mane aro shomai lagbe. Amar mona egula repeat. Our program how is it? Very so, true. He was subject. I can already show learned that I subject to a bowler pitch and another bowler pitch on night. To Amijeta Bolt, Amar experience again, Jetta Bustaversi J. Yenti Sergeant Nijes, City Scan Rit Korte Hobe. Among MRI and City Kunta Car Bicol Petana, both are complementary to each other. Among diseases, Katre. ENT surgeon Nijeki CT scan or by MRI read color practice man in Nijeri Kurtabe, section by section, tinta coronal axial bound monoplane, ecta per ecta, and a practice say a mother shower cake or to be on Purapuri among our CT scan a cathedral joto, duter cathedral joto, thin section among joto machine joto follow. Slice a shatu it at a bishi read out Korazai. Our Askal de Tamra through plate now, Askal to Arfalamra, the software based Amra Filagula, use for the German type chrome or nota. The CD by DVD and Amra laptop, Dicom software, the Gulai, the Cleonic Bishi CD by Amra read Korazai, Karan, a Kishatam Jetta, Axial Penedicta, Emurte. Coronal but says I tell a Kunjagai Kajama de Rekon Assessor with Plater Buduli Amrekon with DBD among software, Dicom software to Jekyll download Korta by enter free. Put at the Ashley the Ochit, you put a plate on Plater Shule Shobnish Pajana, Dicom Hule Apnetake, zoom out easily Korta Paran, hundred percent, two hundred percent food, about a reconstruction Korta Paran Jekonobabe. Come here out, Boktober Adigay to Korbona Shobeget. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shami Manwarulak. Shami Manwarulak is the head of the department of ENT in our uh, Shamarita Medical College Hospital. 
uh, now, and he is a he is a very big uh, special surgeon in Silet region also. Colonel Azad, please. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, uh, joining me. Uh, I'm honored. Uh, thanks uh, to Dr. Uh, Rafael Mursalin. Uh, I had a, a good memory uh, with his father. When I came back from Tata Memorial Cancer Hospital, I have, uh, after completing my fellowship training, I, I sent uh, CT scan MRI for the head neck cancer to his father. And personally, several times I used to talk with him what I want to know uh, to get the information before doing surgery. So as a head neck cancer or any surgeon before doing surgery, he or she must uh, uh, have a talk with uh, his radiologist regarding this extension of the disease. The, I want to say a few words regarding this source. Like in head neck cancer, what we want to know, the extent of the disease and uh, local, then regional, that means neck node, condition of the neck node and the distant metastasis. Say if I, is the, it is the duty of surgeon to uh, get the information, to write the requisition properly to what extent I want to know before doing surgery. Say like if the neck node is stuck with the carotid more than 270 degree, so it is inoperable. So if I not emphasize this uh, requisition to the radiologist, how he, he will report before Definitely we are doing the clinical examination before doing surgery, but radiology is the only key things who can uh, dictate me the, how much the involvement in the carotid. So is the one thing. Another thing is that this is already metastasis, advanced disease and distant metastasis in the lung or in the brain. So before going to do surgery, I want to, if I uh, came to know there is already distant metastasis occurred, then if I do the surgery, this will be a crime for the, for the surgeon and for our society also. So uh, these th things, and, and, and he could uh, touch each and everything. Uh, few things uh, re remained untouched, like uh, oral cancer and tongue cancer. Already Professor Yusuf sir has mentioned in tongue and throat the mouth, MRI is the only things. Only uh, because in tongue cancer, third dimension, you have to know by MRI. Other than it is not possible to see, see the th third dimension. And in uh, laryngeal cancer, CD scan is better, but in problem solving tools like Subtle cartilage erosion. In subtle cartilage erosion, MRI is, is the problem uh, solving tools. Other things, after doing surgery, if I come to know the recurrence, then this is also important how to uh, read the recurrence. That means. So, in uh, abroad, in my tenure, I have seen the surgeon and the trainee always rooming around the radiologist to see, and the professor send the trainee to go to the uh, radiologist and uh, see this point, whether it is. With the fat plane, uh, 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 if I uh, do the surgery, I, I won't come back or it is stuck with the disease. So many times I have uh, run down to the radiologist. In our country, it is absent, sir, with, with due respect, all other dignitaries here. So during training, if the trainee used to run out, these the radiologist, they could learn more, better. And regarding radiologist also, they should choose one sub top, sub 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 uh, sites like in head neck cancer or in the autology or rhinology so that the patients and the uh, surgeon will be the comfortable and patient will also get benefits. Uh, there, there will be less chance of error. So uh, these things I, I need. And third thing, sir, I want to mention regarding this oral cancer, what Professor Yusuf sir already mentioned, our chief technique. Another is that if uh, in, in advanced stages, if high ITF is involved, in particular for high ITF, above the sigma notch, this is there, though it is inoperable. So in this situation, I, if I open the disease, I have seen the disease is stuck with the skull base and high ATF is involved. I will not get the margin, disease free margin, RG resection. This will be another problem for the surgeon. So this is the intimate relationship with the surgeon and the radiologist and what professor or, or mentor, you also said told the, the detailed anatomical knowledge and the catabatization of the also radiology is the only another cornerstone for the surgeon to do the surgery and for the for, for the patient and the, for the surgeon also for comfortable surgery and for get uh, uh, for getting the r0 resection negative margin uh, to prevent recurrence also and for the radiologist also they should know and they should choose the sub site not all these things in the head neck in one basket this is not this is never possible this sorts of scenario i have not ever seen in my tenure in uh, tata and also in america and md anderson also sir 
So this is the time to choose in one subsite. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to say something regarding this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Colonel Ali Azad. Professor Akhtar Jaman, uh, are you here with us, uh, Principal Jashor Medical College? Just retired from uh, Professor Akhtar Jaman. Uh, thank you. Uh, please, please, your comment, uh, please. Thank you. Thank you uh, uh, the org to, uh, first, of, first of all, I give my salam to all. And thanks the organizer, especially uh, Professor Khushabar Mojimdar for his uh, tremendous effort that he has given the, to continue the master classes. I especially thank him, was to th give thanks him. And I want to give thanks to the presenter for this nice presentation. Ami Shobar Kothapote, Ami Shunlam Shunachi, Kubi Shundu Legate, Amade Pendis Darachen, Baunu Jarachen, Parashundu Bissosan Kurachen, Ami Shu the actor Jinis Bolboje, radiology, even imaging. It is indispensable, ENT, ENT Sajum the Jumne. Not only for us, for patient. Ami Jude actor patient, Kasajudi Ami Jacon operation with Ami informed concern with the Jai. Say Akun are radiology among a staging shop kitchen yet again details Nabule, Shekikore Amadrike inform consent the shop kitchen. Ebong Amar Muneja, Amadishuma, Amra Jara, staging Gulo Purici, Mukusto Kurici, Akon de radiology imaging CT scan MRI Amadeke Eglo Akebare Shows Kuradiace, Ebong Eglo Kurubikol Ponai. The Donobat, Ami Abba Shavaka Donova Janati, Ebong Amaki Bolte de Ajuna. Donovat. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Akhtar Jaman. Thank you very much for your uh, nice notes. Uh, I think we are almost near to the end of our uh, uh, session. Uh, we, before hearing Professor, uh, uh, our Dr. R.K. Nath Dada, Amadeh Shobar Murubi Dada ke amra shunbo. Raghe ami bolbo je amadeh, ami amadeh roi je uh, chat box says the shows the comment are say, Egulani, all pay to bully Shankebe, Amitikisi, Jeshabula Jinishni, Alapolachana Hegase, Kisukisulok, uh, Urukum comment to Koresen, who Palo Lagashunte, we all ENT people are busy in unnecessary things, just like tonsil septum. Sorry for the real comments. It a monitor duke bolche, the way it a tick for the from the beginning, from the beginning, Udiga Mother Kisu, Yan Atakleto, Cholafira, Rose Garataka like Betar, Poreshop Kisu Milea. Uh, ENT is general, other regular thug way, plus at the same time, I'm right. Advanced Jinish Neo, uh, Kothabulbo, uh, obviously, advanced Jinish Kajo Korbo, Tikas. What is DW, MRI, and ADC? And the rule of this, what is better for who is? Uh, uh, Raphael, uh, can you pass a comment with this? Uh, what is DW, MRI? Just in brief, just in brief. Shivir MRI sir, regular mainly sir cystic lesion jago la achha sir. Regular jo no khub better hai. Amra sir ekta intracranial abscess dekhiye chhe. Ram jo sir sinusitis theke gaye chilo. Right. So ei dhorne ei gulo khub arto chhe sir. Normally amra bolle jekro dhorne neoplasm sir. DW the sir high hai. Aur ADC the low hole. Mota mota dhorne na jaye. This is malignant. So this is another indicator for malignancy sir. In general. Thank you. Thank you. Arik John, question for you. Sir, without histopathology, can MRI tell us about adenoid cystic, or the SNR, or the squamous cell carcinoma, or other? Yes. Amra actually, kono kisu even histopathology, or amader ke shesh kotha bolte parena. Amader experience the rokom. E gula amader ke amon kotha ulla guideline the. Je gula diye amra surgery extent of surgery, clearance level of surgery, kotha ta ki korbo. E gula the decision ne ajuno. Amra MRI theke. A radiologist the comment the gadget data pay the egula amada jino could be useful. A jini prashna koresan only uh uh jinishtakin to apnake eba we dicta be egg babe the kajabana. Even bullam to the histopathology, amother aske, even amrajara on egg thyroid current egg benje uh FNC by histopathology, multinodular gutter bullche, operation core decision, papillary carcinoma, our papillary carcinoma, do you generate a multinodular gutter chulea shekana umbra loja pai? Kaj Ugula mother thugbe, kunota shash kotana. Come on, I mean, Rukum, the Gizar Shabai Botaboti, Jesus, the Prashno Kurisan, Ugulani Eko, Balo discussion already, um, Huegese, Amade, um, our Karakuno, comment Nataklami, Dadake, Kotabul Tabul Vek to among, uh, Arkana Dada Pore, Amade, uh, Aske, Amade Onekra Tegase, Amade, scientific partner, healthcare pharmaceuticals, 
আসান খান সাহেব এর পরে কথা বলবেন আর কারো যদি কোনো কমেন্ট থাকে প্লিজ কমেন্ট বক্সে লেখেন আমরা এর পরে কথা বলবো অসুবিধা নাই দাদা আমাদেরকে একটু উপদেশ দিবেন আর কে না দাদা প্রথমে ডক্টর খুরশেদ তোমাকে আন্তরিক ভাবে ধন্যবাদ জানাই যে তুমি মানে প্রত্যেক দুই সপ্তাহ এই সব ওয়েবিনার গুলো অ্যারেঞ্জ করছো তার জন্য আসলে আমরা অনেক উপকৃত হই আর দ্বিতীয়ত ডক্টর মোরসালিন মানে তিনি নিয়ে তোমাকে অনেক দিন তুমি করে বলছো কিছু মনে করো না তার কারণ হচ্ছে এই সেমিনারে যারা আছে আমার মনে হয় আমি সবার সিনিয়র তাই নাকি তারা স্বীকার করি এবং আমি যে জানি না এটাও স্বীকার করি তার কারণ হচ্ছে আমি আগেও বলেছি এখনো বলছি আমরা যখন ডাক্তারি পাশ করি তখন আলট্রাসাউন্ড গ্রাম বের হয়নি যাই হোক সবকিছুতে <laughs> সেখানে আমি বলবো মিনিমাম দশ থেকে বিশটা এই রেডিও যদি টিচার কে দিয়ে একটা ক্লাস নেওয়া হচ্ছে এখন নাও কিনা আমি জানি না তবে এগুলো শেখার দরকার আছে বর্তমান যারা সার্জন তোমরা যারা সার্জারি করবে ভবিষ্যতে এখন জুনিয়র যারা আছে অতি জুনিয়র যারা আছে তারা তো তোমার থেকে ভালো ভালো শিখবে এটাও ঠিক কারণ দিন যত আসছে টেকনোলজি টেকনোলজি ডেভেলপ করছে টেকনোলজি ডেভেলপ করার জন্য তারা আরো আমাদের কাছ থেকে অনেক বেশি শিখবে তোমার থেকে যে নিয়ে যেটা সে তো তোমার থেকে ভালো জানবে সুতরাং সেই হিসাবে তোমরা সিলেবাস তৈরি করার সময় অন্তত রেডিওলজির কতগুলো ক্লাস স্টুডেন্টদেরকে শেখানোর জন্য তোমরা একটা ম্যানেজ করো সেটা হলে তারা এই জিনিসগুলো নিজে কে জানে বললো ইএনটি সার্জনদেরকে মানে পার্সোনালি সিটি এবং এবার এগুলা স্টাডি করতে শিখতে হবে তার কারণ হচ্ছে আমি দেখছি ওই যে সিঙ্গাপুরে এক ডাক্তার আছে কি জানি ইন্ডিয়ান ডাক্তার সিঙ্গাপুর জেনারেল হসপিটালে কি নাম জানি সে নিজে সিটি এমআরএ সবগুলো সে একদম পয়েন্ট টু পয়েন্ট সে স্টাডি করে মানে ফিল্ম দেখে সে সবকিছু স্টাডি করে তো সুতরাং আমাদেরকে যারা আমরা সার্জারি যারা করি বা তোমরা সার্জারি যারা করছো তাদেরকে এটা শেখা উচিত কারণ অনেক সময় এক এক রেডিওলজিস্ট এক এক ধরনের রিপোর্ট দেয় এটা আমি দেখেছি ওরা রাফায়েল রাফায়েল ভালো জানবে তার কারণ হচ্ছে সেই হিসাবে অন্তত আমরা যারা আমরা যেমন ধরো আমি যে এক্সরে বা ইয়েগুলো করি ওগুলো বেশিরভাগ ক্ষেত্রে আমি নিজেই রিপোর্টটা লিখবো তার কারণ হচ্ছে রেডিওলজিস্ট কী রিপোর্ট দিলে তার উপর আমি নির্ভর করবো সেই সেটির কথা সেটির কথা বলতেছিলেন দাদা সেটি 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 হ্যাঁ ডক্টর সেটি সে সে কিন্তু একদম এগুলো সম্বন্ধে এমআরআই এগুলো সে ফিল্ড দেখে কীভাবে যে সে মানে বোঝায় এটা আমার মনে হয় একদম রেডিও স্টেশনে বোঝাতে পারে সেই রকম করে আমি তার কয়েকটা প্রোগ্রাম দেখেছি সেই হিসাবে তাদেরকে অন্তত তোমার জুনিয়র স্টুডেন্টকে ক্লাসগুলো নেওয়ার ব্যবস্থা করো যারা তারা নিজেরা স্টাডি করতে পারে তাহলে সে নিজে ঠিক করতে পারবে আমি কতটুকু আঁকাবো কতটুকু অপারেশন করবো অপারেশন করবো না এগুলো সে নিজে ঠিক করবে এবং সেই হিসাবে আমার মনে হয় এগুলো করা উচিত তোমরা যারা এটা আমার মনে হয় এটা একটু যে উদ্যোগটা এবং ডক্টর হলে বিসিপিএস বা ঢাকা ইউনিভার্সিটির সাথে কথা বলো যে ক্লাসগুলো তাহলে ভালো হবে এইটুকু বলছি তো তুমি আমাকে সবার শেষে দশ এই জন্য আমাকে বসেই থাকতে না মুরুবি দাদা আপনি আপনি সবার পরেই বলবেন ঠিক আছে আমাদের ধর্মে তো আছে যে মানে 
দোলনা থেকে কবর পর্যন্ত কবর পর্যন্ত হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ শেখার জিনিস থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ দাদা ওয়েলকাম ওয়েলকাম আমি যেটা জানি না সেটা আমার স্বীকার করতে আমার খুব মানে অপরাধ বোধ হয় কারণ সব একজন তো সব কিছু জানবে সেটা কোনোদিন হতে পারে না থ্যাংক ইউ সেটা শিখো এবং তোমার দুনিয়াদেরকে শিখো তারা তাদের দুনিয়ার যেভাবে শিখায় সেটা করো আর শুধু টাকার পিছনে না না ছুটে আমার মনে আমার মনে কিছু কাজ করা উচিত কিছু কাজ করা উচিত সেটা উচিত এবং সমাজের কিছু উপকার করা উচিত এটাও মনে রাখতে হবে টাকা পয়সা না দুনিয়াতে পৃথিবীতে একজনের জন্য কত মানে একটু বেশি দরকার হয় আপনার দাদা দাদা আপনি যা বললেন আপনি যা বললেন তার মানে তো মানে টাকা আপনার পিছে আর আমার পিছে ঘুরবে এটাই আর কি কথা তো একই একই হলো ঘুরে আমি সেই কথাই বলি লেস দ্য মানি টু রান আফটার মি রান শুড নট রান আফটার দ্য মানি লেস দ্য মানি রান আফটার মি থ্যাংক ইউ এটা এটা করা উচিত সমাজের কিছু উপকার করতে পারলে কিন্তু মানুষ তোমাকে মনে রাখবে এটা এটা তুমি মনে রাখো থ্যাংক ইউ দাদা অনেক রাত হয়ে গেছে আমরা শেষ করে দেব অনেক শেষ করে দেব মিস্টার আহসান খান আমাদের হেলথ কেয়ার ফার্মাসিউটিক্যালস এর আমাদের সায়েন্টিফিক পার্টনার প্লিজ ডক্টর আহসান খান ইওর কমেন্ট আপনার বোট অফ থ্যাঙ্কস বোট অফ থ্যাঙ্কস থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার টুডেস ওয়ান্ডারফুল স্পিকার অনারেবল মডারেটর এন্ড ইমিনেন্ট প্যানেল অফ এক্সপার্টস এন্ড অল দা রিনাউন্ড otolaryngologists and head neck surgeons who has participated from different parts of bangladesh it was an wonderful session as per our knowledge this is the highest participating platform amongst all the societies running through this sort of webinar uh, where almost all the renowned otolaryngologists and head neck surgeons of bangladesh has stepped forward to give their experience knowledge to make the program more lively for the upcoming surgeons this is asanul khan on behalf of healthcare pharmaceutical team want to express our gratitude to all of you thank you very much for your for allowing us to be a part of this wonderful session we want to play more vital role to arrange this sort of program in coming days both virtually and physically lastly we are praying for your sound health and happiness during this crucial time thank you very much sir